In this episode of Lessons from Legends, we will see how Reinhard Bonker was never afraid to use technology to preach the gospel. From his early use of printing presses and radio to a sound system that would reach 1.6 million people live, Reinhard was always on the cutting edge. All this today on Lessons from Legends. The host of Lessons from Legends, Dr. Baron Gilfillan, was the TV producer for evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. Seeing multitudes saved and healed at Bonnke's crusades inspired him to create a discipleship program for the Global Harvest, an international school of ministry known as the ISOM. ISOM is now the world's largest video Bible school with 20,000 training sites in 150 nations. Instructors on the program include more than 100 legendary teachers from the global body of Christ, including Jack Hayford, John Bevere, Joyce Meyer, Reinhard Bonnke, A.R. Bernard, and T.L. Osborne. In this podcast, Dr. Barron breaks down specific essential lessons he's learned over 30 years from these legends of the Christian faith in a concise, personal, and easy to understand way. So here is today's Lessons from Legends podcast with your host, Dr. Baron Gilpolin. Hi, welcome to another episode of Lessons from Legends. I'm your host, Dr. Baron Gilpolin, and uh, in this entire series, we're looking at lessons we can learn from people who have really been effective for God, who've done great things and have left a legacy. And we try to identify the principles that are in their lives and to try and learn from them. And the mentor that I've covered a lot of the sessions on uh, Lessons from Legends has been Reinhard Bonker. Um, he was a, a spiritual father to me and a mentor and somebody that uh, I really uh, learned so much from. And um, the area that I want to focus on today is technology because um, our organization is just, you know, loves technology. We love to use every technology we can find. We love to develop it. We love to learn it. We love to grow in it. And uh, I know that that is the only way that we can really stay on the cutting edge. And this really is a, a principle that really was laid in my life by Reinhardt by watching Reinhard, you know, always trying to find another way to preach the gospel, another way to reach people for Christ. And this was a passion going all the way back when he was a missionary in Lesotho, when he was in, back in the 1967, 68, 69. Um, Reinhard refused just to sort of be a traditional missionary. You know, he um, he raised money for bicycles, uh, you know, for these, these traveling evangelists who would take out the literature. And so he actually developed a printing press and he would print, you know, uh, gospel literature that, that he would then hire to get these uh, bicycle evangelists to take these uh, um, the, this literature out to remote villages. And so even back then he was using what he had in that, in that time. And then he went on radio because that became a major area that he uh, felt like he could reach out more, began to do radio programming and began to reach out to people through the radio and um, and always, you know, Reinhardt even started a Bible school. And my understanding was, you know, from those that, that were a part of it, that, you know, Reinhardt, even though he's preaching to Bible school students, he could not end, end a message or end a, uh, a lesson in the Bible college without doing an altar call because Reinhardt's like, you can't finish a meeting without an altar call. So his, uh, his poor students would have to, you know, you know, get that every single week. But you know, Reinhardt just had such a passion to to reach people, and he wanted to to use technology. And then, you know, we see that as Reinhardt progressed in his ministry, he um, he you know moved to Southern Africa, and then he began to use tents. And we've looked at a whole program that deals with the you know the smaller tents he used, and then he got to a ten thousand seater tent that was built out of a person that came out of Europe, and um, finally he then built the thirty four thousand seater tent, and then. You know, its roof was destroyed, and so he raised the funds for a, a stronger, um, you know, larger, better tent roof. And so that tent then became too small, and you'd think, okay, well, well, it was a failure. But no, what Reinhardt would say, you know, that he prayed to God and says, God, I want to use this tent a handful of times, and, and now we it's too small for the ministry. And the Lord said, you know, you didn't, he said, not only you built the tent, but more than that, God said, I used the tent to build you and to build your team. And going through the process of, of developing that technology, of learning to use it, of, of then putting up that tent, and then, you know, at the end of the day, it then got given to another ministry. But, 
but but that was just another way that Reinhardt could could overcome the obstacles that were faced, which was weather and other things like that. And Reinhardt then went to open air crusades, and um, and then it just you know began to grow. And then the next major area really was uh, was the area of the sound systems because. It's one thing to 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 reach, you know, maybe fifty, a hundred, two hundred, and thousand, ten thousand, and then suddenly, when your crowds really begin to grow, and you're now looking at, you know, fifty thousand, hundred thousand, and um, I happened to join Reinhardt's team at the very same time as the the sound engineer that God brought onto the team, and back in 1986, his name was Derek Murray, and Derek, even to this day, is still working and doing. Um, you know, doing the sound systems for Reinhardt's ministry. Now, you may think, well, just put out some speakers and then just, you know, have a good, loud, loud, uh, good uh, amplifying system and that'll be it. But, you know, Derek was, was really, even as a technology person, as a person who understood sound and he uh, came out of uh, working studios and recording in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, he's from England and he married a German a, a person from Germany and uh, him and his wife Barbara, just amazing people. And they, um, you know, they had a very a passion for sound and, and, that, and that sound would be used to present the gospel as clearly as possible. And, you know, one of my early crusades with Derek, because I was the television producer and, and, um, and we were in, in Lagos, Nigeria, and this was one of the first crusades that Reinhardt had done in Nigeria. And, and so um, I'm, I'm on the, an, a, what they call a umatic, a three-quarter inch uh, a video cassettes back in those days with a camera. And, and um, I had all kinds of connections that, that had facilitated my sound. And I had a live feed from the board as well as another, other microphones picking up crowd so- sound. And this was way back in the beginning. And, and um, I remember that we had about 150,000 people in the crowd. And, and it was the night of the Holy Spirit. And, and Reinhardt's preaching there. And there's this massive crowd. They're just about to receive the Holy Spirit. And um, suddenly, as he's as he's about to pray for them, and he's just come to that point, brought this whole crowd's ready, and it's just it's they're about to receive the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, the amp the um, um, the the sound system um, actually the I guess it was the uh, um, the sound board it 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 went out, and it just uh, he had uh, had no ability to bring the sound in from from the microphones, and then put it out to the amplifiers. It, it, it just the, the sound board literally just blew up. It just went just went dead, and um, and so Reinhardt's there, and he's speaking in the microphone. There's no sound coming out. And um, Derek's over in the soundboard, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how, how's he going to handle this? How's he going to do this? Well, Derek and I used to really love these small um, cassette players in those days. They were, but he went to the highest end, which was the Sony professional end um, little sound systems, and and um, it has a, a line in line out capability on this little Sony cassette uh, machine. And I, I suddenly I see Derek send a, a runner over from his board, and he and this this runner comes up to up to my television side, and he and he says I need that connection, and he points to the connection that goes from, um, a, you know, a, a three quarter inch or from a, a quarter inch jack to a mini jack, and so um, I'm not knowing what Derek's doing like this. I pull it out and I hand it to the runner, and he takes it back and. Reinhardt's trying to get the crowd, you know, keep them, you know, from 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 just, you know, dispersing. And and Derek takes that that little little mini jack. He takes the the, the, the you know the sound jack and he points it into the, the, the little mini jack uh, connector that I had given him. Puts it into his his Sony little cassette machine and line in. Takes a line out out of it. He had one microphone only on the system. And he feeds that to the amplifiers, and they had one microphone with that little cassette machine, 150,000 people. And, and Reinhard uh, passed the microphone back and forth between him and the interpreter, and they led the people in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People got filled with the Holy Spirit, and, you know, the crusade was, a, was saved, and, a, and it was a success. And so, you know, I just saw the, the grace of God on Derek, you know, as a, as a sound engineer, um, he was was innovative. He he always had ideas as to how, you know, he could make this better. How he could, you know, um, you know, fix things. I, and I remember um, we went to a crusade. I shared one on 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 bringing down the citadel of Satan. We went to a crusade in Ghana where Reinhard, for the only one time that I knew, did not take a sound engineer. And 
And then, I mean, everything went wrong. I mean, bees moved into the sound system. The, all the sound speakers, the, the bass speakers all blew out. Um, you know, it was a disaster. And from that point onwards, Reinhardt always tried to take a sound engineer wherever he went. And, and Derek was the sound engineer. And so, you know, as the crowds began to grow and as we began to, to look at 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, and then now going up and God had given Reinhardt a word that he would be able to, to, to win a million souls to Christ in a single meeting. And, um, and so Reinhardt was already knowing that that's where things were going. But, you know, Derek was, um, was, was trying to figure, configure these sound systems and he worked with companies in England and he worked uh, with some of the best companies in the world to, to piece together s- sound systems that, that would work. And, and Derek, you know, shared with me how they would, uh, in, the, in those days, they had horizontal systems. So the whole idea was to actually have sound systems that reached across large uh, spaces. And he would have about 800 meters wide and maybe 400 meters deep. And, um, and those were working for a certain degree of time. But um, they realized that as these crowds began to grow in the mid-90s going up into the year 2000, um, that they needed to change and work with the technology. And the technology went to a, a, a new system. It's called a, um, a, a line array uh, system, which is very much where the, the, the speakers hang from very high uh, uh, positions and they hang down in a sort of a very small arc. And each arc, each part of the arc, uh, projects the sound out to a very large uh, area. And they actually uh, took these line ray systems and they used them and they tested them on an airfield in England. They went 800 meters um, out and it was just as clear as, as, as day. And so they knew that this technology was actually going to be the way of the future for Reinhardt's Crusades. And those were the systems that they, they, they introduced back, in, I think, in 2003 is when they... Um, Brought them into uh, Reinhardt's Crusades there in uh, in in Nigeria, particularly, and um, pretty you know for the next many many years they they won twenty thirty or forty million people to Christ through these line ray systems, and these ones went out and they could reach eight hundred thousand people, they could reach a million, and they were the systems that actually ended up reaching uh, one point six million people in the city of Lagos, and uh, that was a crusade that where I believe Reinhard saw more than a million people get saved in a single meeting. And so Reinhard just always, you know, he was willing to invest in these systems. He was willing to, you know, to get systems into a country and then to get systems across borders uh, from, you know, one country into another country so that he placed one uh, complete sound system on the west coast of Africa and then one on the east coast, and then it actually ended up morphing uh, into multiple systems that could be used for different uh, type of purposes, and um, and so things that you know really began to progress, and 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 then in about 2017 at Reinhardt's farewell, uh, um, you know, event that he had, Reinhardt introduced another dimension. He he went with LED, and he got two massive LED systems. They were uh, um, nine meters by six meters, so six meters high, nine meters across, and they were raised about ten meters. That's thirty over thirty feet into the air, um, and and these uh, these these LED systems would enable people from very far back to be able to see, you know, clear images of Reinhardt preaching, and then now Col- uh, Daniel Kalenda preaching, and and they're just an amazing, uh, you know, a growth in the technology and. It's very much a, um, an incredible just how, uh, from step to step, we saw this progression in how Reinhardt used the technology. Now, um, as things, you know, developed, um, Reinhard, um, he, he used very loud uh, uh, monitoring systems. So when he was on the platform preaching, he had these, these monitors, and, and because Reinhard, he wanted to hear himself, and he wanted to be able to make sure that, that, that he could hear what he was saying and that it was reaching out to other people, but most of all, he wanted to hear the monitoring systems. And, and, and as he was on these platforms week after week, day after day, I mean, Reinhard was one who never gave 50%. He always gave 100, maybe 150%. Reinhard, you know, he used to joke and say, you know, that when I die, he said, I want the worms to have nothing left to eat. He says, I want to expend everything of my being for the gospel while I'm living. And 
and Reinhard <laughs> literally he took that literally and he he um he always gave of his best and and he was always you know he was he was he was harsh on a microphone uh, Reinhard didn't like a lot of the uh you know sort of the 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 ones that lavalier microphones or other ones like that he liked a good handheld microphone because he wanted to be able to to just be able to speak um, strongly into it he wanted to preach he wanted to use emphasis he wanted to you know um to really make it easy to understand and he would he would he would preach with such passion and such power and but one of the consequences of these very loud monitoring systems was that Reinhard began to lose his uh, his his hearing and and certain uh, um, you know areas of his hearing certain parts of the range of he hearing began to dissipate and go and um, and this uh, you know got worse and so he was you know slowly losing his hearing and because of that you also have now you know the fact that you know because he couldn't hear as well he wanted it louder and 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 then louder and then louder and it became almost unbearable for anybody else on the platform because it was so loud and uh, and Reinhard wanted it loud because he wanted to be able to hear what he was saying and how it was coming across so um this was just a it it, it be, became a sort of increasingly an issue and again there was technology that was coming into the market, which was uh, it was a, an in-ear system, and um, um, it's I believe a, one that they, they they tried first was a Garwood system, and they and they and, and Reinhard you know tested it, and he he actually did a crusade with it, and you know what's interesting was that he really loved it, it really worked for him because he was able to now they were able to pinpoint exactly what tone that he could personally hear everything. And he didn't have to blast it through monitoring systems on the platform. And, you know, but Reinhardt, he, after he used it the first time, said, look, this is a great system. This really, really helps me. But he didn't want to continue using it. And it was, um, you know, very much, uh, um, what can I say? It, it was not because the system didn't work and it was not because the technology was good. But at the same time, there had come out a story of a, an evangelist who had an inner earpiece and was hearing like, you know, people to giving him information about people in the in the audience. And um, it had brought a real major scandal into the into the global church. And, and, and Reinhardt was very sensitive to that. He didn't want people to be accusing him of, you know, somehow... Um, doing something that was not fully integrous, and so because of that scandal, because the of the issue, right? I said that's number one reason. And then he said the second reason is he says, says here I am wearing an earpiece. He says and and here I am praying for the deaf people and I'm praying for you know the blind people. He says I don't want people thinking you know that I am myself are not you know fully fully uh, you know um, healed and fully you know. He said I don't want to give that impression, and so. Rhino was very sensitive about people's perception, and and that is actually a very good biblical principle because, you know, the Apostle Paul says, I, I be all things to all men. He says, I do I do nothing which will hinder the gospel. And Rhino was very sensitive to, to um, you know, what other people were saying. And so he put that technology aside and continued the way he was. But you know, I think in about 2004, another evangelist came by and said, "Look, Reinhard, this is actually now being used all over the world. This is the this is going to enhance your ability to preach the gospel." And really, just spoken to Reinhard's life, and God, you know, used that evangelist to speak and to and to bring, you know, counsel to Reinhard. And Reinhard realized that yes, there may be a, a perception issue, but he could go over that and he could share. But he also, at the at the same time, would now be able to clearly hear. And so. He actually, uh, uh, you know, began to use from about 2004 onwards, he began to use an inner ear system where they could really pinpoint, you know, where the volume levels were without hurting anybody else's ears. And they could actually use that technology. And we probably got, you know, from 2004 to the time he went home to be with Jesus in 2019, you know, that we got 15 more years worth of good ministry from Reinhardt because of of that technology, of that system, and that Reinhardt embraced it, and then he used it. And, you know, I don't think anybody, you know, in any way saw him in a negative light for doing it because all it did would help him to 
to hear clearly what he was saying and be able to to share, you know, fully from his heart all the messages that God put in his life. So we see that, you know, that technology was 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 very, very critical. And then, you know, as Reinhardt got on in, in years um, and, and, and he was not able to do as many of the crusades and he turned the reins over to to Daniel and you'd think, well, he just, you know, enjoy his his latter years and, and just, you know, relax. But, you know, Reinhardt, he wanted to preach the gospel to the very end. And Reinhardt at that point discovered Facebook. And so, you know, I mean, he had done some television and other work like that, but but Facebook was just a an amazing gift to Reinhard Bonker because Reinhard was able to be in his own apartment, in his own home, in his own uh, res- residence, and he would would just be able to turn on his computer, and he began to just begin to speak and to share and to and to communicate messages. And you know, I, I saw just just Reinhard began to do all kinds of creative things. He he wrote books and he. Um, and then he began to develop little two-minute video segments that were just fantastic. And then the Full Flame series that Reinhardt developed, an amazing uh, series that, that was a legacy series for him. And, and then Reinhardt began to write you know, poetry, and he began to, to compose music. And he was a great on the, on, on, on the organ and the, and the piano, and, he, and Reinhardt uh, wrote songs. And, he, and he, he just, I mean, it was amazing the technology. He wrote a children's book, you know, that was the story of his life and just illustrated and beautifully done. And you can get a copy at cfan.org. Just go to the store, and you can see that 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 amazing book that he's that he wrote about, you know, him as a child and as a small boy, and just the whole story of his life. And um, you know, and 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 so here, Reinhard was, you know, always pushing. He was looking for new platforms. In fact, you know. The, the ministry is, is, is now um, gotten a whole system. It's called the Decapolis, and where now they're using all kinds of, of, of ways of, of having a boot camp and training evangelists and then taking them into Africa. And then instead of doing one crusade in one location, Daniel will do just one meeting, and we'll probably have a whole program. And, and if we have Daniel on as an interview, we'll be able to actually just go in and talk about that whole system. But it's a brand new system that that Reinhardt had a dream and a vision about, and and now they're doing it, and they've done it in Tanzania, and it's just been incredibly successful. They're multiplying evangelists, multiplying crusades. Instead of going in and doing one city, they're hitting five, now ten cities in, in, a, in a two-week period of time, and multiple sound systems. And, and, and it's just, to me, it's wonderful to see that that ministries not only just grow in terms of their message, but they grow in terms of technology, that they begin to use the technology, that they learn the technology, they learn how to use it, they learn how to grow with it, how to how to get their message out. And and this to me was was something that, that Reinhard and right to his end, he would he would minister just a message on Facebook and two, three, four hundred thousand people would now be be ministered to and be able to watch and be able to participate and then it would become a legacy message would be up there and go out and touch multitudes and multitudes as many as he would sometimes reach in a full crusade Reinhard was now now mostly focused on sharing his life wisdom sharing with other people but he he embraced that side of his life and he embraced that um that the technology in those latter years he used it amazingly well and and wonderfully well and so um just really out of this whole um looking at how reinhardt used technology from the very beginning to when god took him home he was never afraid of technology he was never afraid to learn it he was never afraid to invest in it he was never afraid to um to 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 utilize it to find platforms that worked and that that were effective and if they accomplished the goal of bringing the gospel, making it clear to other people, he he used he used books, he used literature, he used videos, he used uh, music, he used poetry, he used you name it. Reinhard was innovative. He was continually um, developing uh, with technology. He was de- de- developing new content, new ways, and new means of reaching people with the gospel. And so, I really feel like his life is a challenge to all of us. To you know, with COVID and with all the things that have happened in the world, that we would embrace the 
the technological ch the technological changes that we would embrace the the new season and the new ways that people are now interacting and probably our own organization its greatest impact is now in India through Zoom and through you know I'm doing graduations and doing graduation videos and doing and then I'm you know going live and speaking to students in Bangladesh right from from the same platform where I'm speaking to you now and and I'm doing meetings in India and 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 it's it's fantastic. It's amazing that I can minister to people all over India simultaneously, and then multiple countries. And then, you know, the technology is being given by God. And um, I love the, the the statement. I've maybe used it before, but it's 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 some person in the in the in the in the early part of the first second century, and and um, and they were talking about those people, about the early believers, and so this is a person in this in this generation speaking about the first and second century, and this person simply said these words. He said, "If they did what they did with what they had, imagine what we could do with what we have, if we had what they had." So if they did what they did with what they had, imagine what we could do with what we have if we had what they had. And what they had was a passion to give their lives, to go out to the front lines, to preach the gospel, to use everything, the Roman roads that they had. Paul used the amphitheater. Jesus used a boat and used a, the natural sound of, of, of water in the Sea of Galilee to project his voice. He, he used whatever he could in his day and we need to use what God's given us in our day to bring the same message of love, the message of the gospel, message of Christ to the nations of the world. So let's embrace technology. Let's use it. Let's never be afraid of it. And let's learn it and utilize it for the kingdom of God. So let's close with prayer. Father, I pray for every person watching that they would be challenged by this, that they would embrace technology. They would use it for your glory and use it for your kingdom. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, God bless you. If you've enjoyed this podcast and you have a hunger to learn more from these legends of the Christian faith, please check out the ISOM at isomonline.org. You can get an associate, bachelor's, or master's degree, each in as little as a year. Get trained for ministry, get an award that's globally recognized, and learn from some of the best teachers in the world. Check out isomonline.org today. Please subscribe to Lessons from Legends on the Charisma Podcast Network, cpnshows.com, and Apple Podcasts, and give us a five-star review. A visual version of Lessons from Legends and many of the referenced videos and documentaries can be found on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash ministry degree or by simply searching ministry degree on the YouTube site. Also, check us out and follow the audio versions on Google Podcasts and Google Play, Spotify, and YouTube.